Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are doing some more watercoloring, but this time instead of using markers, we are using traditional watercolors. Here I have a little water pot. Uh, this is from Faber-Castell. I think I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. I have all of my heat embossing paraphernalia. I'm using snow embossing powder from Recollections. It's just a white fine detail and then of course my anti-static powder and brush to move it all around. These are fine touch markers or markers. <laughs> These are fine touch brushes from uh, Hobby Lobby. This is where my color inspiration came from. This is Color Cube Volume 1, card number 205. And I tried to kind of stick with these cl colors as closely as possible. The images today come from this uh, Honey Bee In Full Bloom uh, stamp set. I really, really wish this had a die. I don't know if it does or not, but it would have been very helpful. <laughs> uh, so my image and my sentiment come from that. I have some Canson XL watercolor paper. I also purchased that off of uh, Hun uh, yeah, Hobby Lobby, but you can get that in numerous locations. This is the Gonzai Tombi watercolor set that I have. I did discover that there is a new one out. It has more like muted or desaturated colors in it. This one has more like rainbow bright colors. It also has a pearlescent white and gold and almost like a copper. So it does allow you to color swatch your colors and that's where I kind of try to stay true to the colors. I didn't really mix them very much except for in the very middle which we will get into that. It does come with this protective color, but quite cover, but quite often I just use that as a palette, like a watercolor palette, but because I have this glass board, I can use that also. Um, but like I said, I didn't really do any color mixing, so I didn't really need either of those today. So this stamp set has a full middle, so there's no like opening in the middle. And so I discovered when I was going to uh, stamp this image that I had a huge air bubble and I knew the second I went to stamp this, I was going to get ink all over that air bubble, all over the middle, and it was going to be a disaster. So all I did was kind of peel up an edge to release that air bubble and then lay it back down, kind of rolling it back down. Here I, I decided since I had, you know, this larger scrap of that Canson XL watercolor paper that I would go ahead and just stamp this out twice. I did treat that paper with my anti-static powder tool and I'm using Versamark ink to stamp it. There is a little bit of texture to this paper, not a whole lot, but there is some. And so I did stamp this twice and then I will sprinkle on my uh, snow embossing powder and heat set that. So after I heat set that, and I know it's heat set because the powder goes from grainy and kind of extra white to shiny and almost clear, which, which it's not clear, it's white on white, so it's very difficult to see. But I did do this on both sides of this paper. Again, since I had this larger scrap, I wasn't sure if I was going to need it. And to be quite honest, I thought I was going to need it in the middle of this card, um, but I, I, I stuck it out and made it work. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and heat set that. I'm just checking to make sure that everything is shiny and smooth, and then we will move on. I apologize for not being completely in shot right now, but I'm just using that color cube card uh, and spritzing some water, just clean, clear water inside some of the colors that I felt coordinated the best. And then I'm going to, and I even did the white, like I said, didn't even use it, but wasn't sure if I was going to do any color mixing or not. And so I did decide to go ahead and prep that white area just in case. So I did stick this piece of cardstock down to that uh, cut down Cricut mat, and then I'm going to start kind of working in this water into these uh, pans of watercolor. I do it until it's fairly thick. Um, I don't suppose that you have to do it this much, but I do want to have it worked up pretty well so that it's a very bold and vibrant color. Uh, you can always add more water or less water just to kind of get it going. Um, but I just chose to kind of work it up until it's kind of soupy, <laughs> for lack of better words. So, oh, I, I did kind of bring this more in, in to screen. That's good. Okay, so this is what I do for all of those colors that I spritzed water in. I just let the water sit there for a little bit and then I work it with the paintbrush 
to make it soupy. And I did that with all of them. I did that with a number six, but I ended up switching to a number four. This is not a watercoloring in general is not a medium that I use a whole lot. It's not one that I gravitate to. Um, I'm just not very good at it. And I know that that takes practice, but it also takes some skill. And I don't possess the skill or the patience, really, to be quite honest, for it. So what I did is I tried to put some of that water down on there and it just was too much water. It was going to go absolutely everywhere. So I decided I was just going to put a thin film of water, a thin sheen of water all over this image. This water is not super clean right now, but it doesn't really matter. Um, if you wanted to have two separate containers, one with clear, clean water and one that was kind of mucky, you could absolutely do that, but I didn't and it worked out just fine. So I'm going to start with the greenery. That seems to be what I typically start with just because I feel like to me it's safer. <laughs> um, and then I can kind of figure out where to place what colors for flowers and that kind of thing later um, and just kind of work into it as opposed to diving right into the florals, which seem to almost intimidate me to be really quite transparent with you. So I lay down some of this green and I lay down way too much. So all I do is I take a paper towel and just blot it up. Uh, one thing that to be aware of, so I don't know if you watched my last video, uh, but I did some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker water coloring. And with that one, um, I was able to control the pigment and the water a little better. Uh, this, I was just kind of playing. I wasn't sure how much water these markers are. I keep saying markers, goodness, these brushes were going to pick up. And so it was kind of a learning curve. But one of the things that I did that helps me is that I did heat emboss this. You saw me heat emboss it. That creates little wells. So when you go to watercolor within these wells, that watercolor stays within the embossed lines. So it gives you a little bit of grace in the sense that your watercolor won't go absolutely everywhere that you have water. So that was kind of a saving grace there. Uh, you don't have to heat emboss and you could have heat embossed in any color you desired. I just went with white today. Uh, I did tinker with the idea of going gold, but I always go to gold. So I went with white. Um, and this is real time. Y'all, I am slow. I am just playing. I'm just trying to do something different, use mediums that I don't use very often, but I have in my stash that just need some attention every now and then. Um, but I am not a pro with this by any means. And you will see throughout this video that there are several times where I'm like, ugh, I just totally messed that up. But I was trying to tap into my inner... Uh, Amy R. from Prairie, Prairie Paper and Ink, who says, you know, this always looks like a hot mess before it looks good. And so I was trying to kind of keep that in mind as I was going through this card. So I'm going to speed up this video. This is about four times as fast as I actually color. Uh, again, it's not a medium that I am super comfortable with, so it takes me quite a bit of time. One of the things that I did is I tried to lay down water or excuse me pigment where I wanted it to be the darkest did I always stick with that no that top purple flower is an indication of that I just kind of laid down a light wash and then I was like okay this needs more oomph it needs more color it needs more oomph it looks just very blah and so I did go back and add more pigment again I don't know what it is with <laughs> with pink and reds but I have a tendency to want to overwork them. I have a tendency to want to mess with them and, and quote unquote, fix them. The beautiful thing about watercolor is that it does its own thing. It has a very unique, beautiful look, but a lot of us mess with it and we keep messing with it and we keep messing with it. And then it ends up looking just like everything else we do. And it doesn't look like watercolor when we're done because we've messed with it so much. So I do encourage you if you decide to do this to sometimes leave it alone. 
take a step back and come back to it in a few minutes and see what you think it needs. Because if you keep staring at it, you're going to keep fiddling with it and you'll end up messing it up like I did. So I went, dried it a couple times in between layers because I wanted to add more oomph. I wanted to add more color and I really should have just left it alone. Um, I really should have just left it alone, but I didn't. So you see me fiddle and pick at this for ever in a day. So sometimes I wanted to kind of lift some color. So what I did is I had a thirsty brush, which means it's a fairly dry brush. And I just run that over this image and pick up some of the pigment. And that worked out fairly well. I kind of regret this particular step in adding color to the middle of this segment. Number one, I should not have added that blue. It started to turn into a brown yucky mess. So again, I just grabbed my or gray mucky mess and I added my paper towel over it and just kind of blotted it. But I was going for like this, uh, not tie dye, but just this kind of watercolor wash. And again, I just sit there and fiddle with it and totally ruin the beauty that is watercolor. So I did dry this again and I noticed that I had a lot of ink sitting on top or a lot of pigment sitting on top of this embossing powder and I have already removed the stamp set from my Misty. And so what I did is I took a damp paper towel, not sopping wet, just damp, and I swiped it over the surface of this cardstock. Should not have swiped it. I should have blotted. And I do go back later and blot this, but I ended up smearing pigment everywhere. And it was at this point that I was like, man, I shouldn't even make a video of this. I should delete all of this footage and just start something different. No one will ever know and just move on. But again, I always hear crafters that are greater and better than me say, it always looks worse before it looks better. These are techniques you just want to keep trying, keep going, see where it takes you. Is it going to turn out to be your favorite card? Maybe not, but it's worth powering through. And so I try to remember that and uh, keep that in mind. Um, I did decide that I needed to fussy cut this. There was a lot of warping. Um, and like I said, I got a lot of pigment outside of that when I smeared it, <laughs> trying to fix it. I made it worse. <laughs> and so I did decide to go ahead and fussy cut this. Uh, the easiest way to fussy cut is to actually keep your dominant, your scissors in your dominant hand, keep that fairly still and turn your paper with your non-dominant hand. Am I doing that in this one? No, no, I'm not. So you should do as I say, not as I do, and that will give you a much better image. I don't know if there is a die available for this particular stamp set, but if there is, I wish I would have purchased it because I imagine it also has a die for you to cut out that center. So here is where I dampened a paper towel and blotted instead of swiped, trying to get some more of that pigment off of that embossing powder. Um, it does resist it, but it can sit on top of it. And so just kind of taking a damp paper towel and blotting, not swiping, will help you remove some of that. I did take a Sakura Jelly Roll pen in eight uh, and try to kind of clean up some of the edges and then did end up putting some highlights randomly along the flowers. There was really no rhyme or reason to where I was putting them. I just put them where I thought they looked nice. There are more opaque uh, jelly roll pins out on the market, but this just happens to be the one I've had for a very long time. And I will probably upgrade to something a bit more opaque when this one decides to kick the bucket. But until then, we're going to use this one while I've got it. I did pick a sentiment from that In Full Bloom stamp set. It says that uh, he makes everything beautiful in its time. And I thought that was very appropriate for this card that I was, that was fraught with troubles. <laughs> <laughs> and learning curves. Um, and so I did stamp that twice in Unicorn White Pigment Ink from Hero Arts. And then I'm going to use that same snow embossing powder from Recollections. And he embossed this in white. I feel like sparkle can hide a multitude of sins. So I have a Spectrum Noir uh, sparkle brush pen right here. This is kind of a clear sparkle. And I'm just going over all of the flowers. 
this is going to react with that watercolor. It is going to move that watercolor around. So just be conscious of that. Um, I had a little bit of that pink go into that kind of light teal blue. Um, wasn't a huge deal, but it does react and will move that watercolor around. And I just clean that brush off by rubbing it on to that flower sack cloth that I use for all of the things. I have a five by five card base here that I made out of cream heavyweight cardstock from Paper Studio. And then I have a piece of purple cardstock also from Paper Studio. Um, I just felt like this size and shape of this fit a square card better than a five by seven or an A2 sized card. What I did is I took that purple paper and I lightly misted it with water on both sides. And then I'm going to run it through this embossing folder from We Are Memory Keepers. I apologize. I do not know what this is called. It almost looks like a basket weave or a chevron. So, uh, and I've had this for a very long time. I'm not even sure if it's still available, but my whole purpose was to add some texture to this card. And so I run this through my die cut machine and then I will adhere it flat onto the card base. Before I adhere it to the cardstock, I did dry it because it was still pretty damp. And then I am going to, again, because I think that shimmer hides all sorts of sins, I'm going to spray this with some, sim with some shimmer spritz. Woo! Speaking hard. This is Sparkle Shimmer Spritz. Um, this is from Imagine Crafts. Comes in this little tiny bottle. Uh, I've had it a very long time. It goes a long way. You can always add like rubbing alcohol to it if you still see sparkle in it, but the liquid has run out. Uh, that is what uh, gives you sparkle. So this did warp the paper just a little bit. So I did take my heat tool and zap that dry and then adhere that flat onto the card base. So I did place my stamping positioning tool on that just to help it adhere and dry flat. So I had actually stamped on the other side of this uh, watercolor cardstock. It's no big deal. No one but you and all of YouTube, I and all of YouTube will know that there was something on the back of this. I did add instant dimension foam tape to the back again to help with some of that warping uh, because there has been so much liquid applied to this particular cardstock. I adhered that onto the card base and then I'm going to apply some gems. I scattered these gems from Blingy Thingy on Etsy, just kind of around the sentiment. I chose kind of an aqua-y pool color. And then this envelope comes from Paper Studio also. It is a five by seven envelope. Because I do not have any square envelopes, I decided I would make my own. So this five by seven envelope I take and I cut three quarters of an inch off of each side, and then that will fit the card perfect. So what I end up doing is opening up that flap, the glue flap, you know, where you lick is up at the top. And then I unfold that. And then I just put a thin bead of glue along each edge, fold that up and adhere it down. And you have a custom sized envelope. I've learned this little trick from Jennifer McGuire. She sometimes makes envelopes that are, or cards, excuse me, that are kind of an awkward or non-traditional size. And so she makes a custom envelope using this method for those particular oddly shaped cards. This sticker sheet came with the wallpaper I used to refinish my desktops. And I just picked one that matched the colors from the card and put that in the bottom left corner of the envelope. And then this completes our project for today. So thank you so much for sticking with me. I hope that you feel inspired. And until then, we will see you next time. Bye.